Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And we bring back a guest from, it's just like uh, two months ago, back in June. Yeah. You're on the podcast. Je- it wasn't so, a long Jessica, ago. welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you. We get a chance to meet in real life here at Hub. IRL. At, uh, in, in real life, IRL, you know, <laughs> keeping up with the acronyms here at Inbound. And uh, I'm super excited to be able to chat with you. I bragged about you on my last episode. Um, I know a lot of the stuff that you do. We've got a chance to go deeper. Some of our new listeners since the past couple of months may not necessarily know what you do. Go a little bit deeper in how you serve salespeople. Sure. Um, so my firm is Amplify Group. And we focus, um, like our specialty is in founder-led sales enablement and founder-led sales transitions. So that's mainly pre-seed through Series A companies where the founder is starts off as a sole seller. And so we're really helping the founder learn how to sell and learn how to sell effectively and efficiently. And then once they reach a certain inflection point, then we help them uh, hand the baton to and hire really like build their go-to-market infrastructure and hire their first go-to-market team members ramp those people up. And then if we do our job right, we worked ourselves out of a job and they graduate. <laughs> Fair enough. We like that. Um, so, and, and here's the thing, and I would love for you to go and connect with Jessica. You can find all of her information on LinkedIn and we have it in the show notes down below as well. So Jessica, talk to us about, um, we were ta- having a conversation yesterday with Big o, with uh, the big brother, John Barrows um, in the sales game. John and uh, we, we are in a all- hallway and had a really good, in- uh, interesting discussion. One of the things that came up was around accountability. And no matter who you are, no matter where you are in the game right now, accountability is absolutely critical. I want you to go into talk about define accountability and how, um, let's start off with that. Define accountability, how you see accountability in a sales atmosphere right now. Um, well, sometimes we don't see it. Oh. <laughs> but um, I think when we do see it, we see it in both I guess, leading and lagging indicators, right? Yep. So we're all given a quota. I think we all know that. Um, but we really don't want to wait until the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year to see if we've hit that number. So to me, accountability is really showing up week to week and showing those leading indicators of net new meetings, net new outreach touches, whatever that is, but making sure that you're seeing that top of funnel activity from the reps yep. that you know is necessary to drive the outcomes that you have assigned to them i'm a big believer in fundamentals like you master the fundamentals you'll see magic just like you and i and oftentimes i feel we and no offense to any of the tech companies out there because i love my tech tool just like anyone else we find or i find sometimes that we throw a tech tool or a tech you know more to the tech stack and tell the sales rep this is going to help you and now leave me alone kind of idea as leadership do you see that? Is that just uh, something that, you, you know, you, you come across? Um, I think definitely everyone is investing more in technology. I still do see a lot of reps very resistant to yeah. technology, though, which yeah. kind of blows my mind. Like, I, you know, I'm still trying to understand that thought process. Um, so, I mean, we try to break it down. Like, like for example, uh, what we're doing with one yeah. one customer of mine where their sales reps are resistant to using the CRM. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, is we're breaking it down into a series of trainings uh, over a couple of weeks. And then we're going to do a monthly standing call. That's like our HubSpot call with the sales yeah. team. And it's got to be like every month you got to show up, bring your problems, bring your issues and let's keep working on it. Let's keep this an active dialogue, not like a one and done yeah. thing. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I love sales tech. I can't wait to get my hands on new tools. I love things that make my job faster and I can see re- better results. So I don't know. I mean, are you seeing that? Like, are you seeing reps resistant to tech? Yeah. I mean, you see some resistant and I, well, not, not as, well, here's the thing. I think the piece that I come across is that the reps and tying back to the accountability factor, it's almost like babysitting I, or like as a manager, I don't have to do the work anymore. So we have Gong now. So therefore, Gong can help me to identify where you might have challenges. But yeah, Gong may be able to help me identify some of the key words or some of the, you know, some of the areas. But I need to still listen to that whole conversation yeah. and not just say Gong said, well, there's where the ref was talking more than the prospect. How did they set up the, the, the fr- frame out the value? How did they, you know, some of those things are not necessarily going to be easily 
um, translated. And I think the organizations I'm finding adopting more tech, but it's not the accountability piece is missing. Totally. Yeah. And that's top down. So go back to that. Yeah. Like, why do you feel that you mentioned at the beginning, you said like, Sometimes, you know, it may be non-existent. Why? Why do you feel that that's the case that we're not seeing? I gave my theory, but what are, what are some of your, your experiences working with clients? Um, I, I think sometimes for, for my clients, and again, I'm working with early stage companies, the founder doesn't know what good looks like. Gotcha. So they have a hard time knowing what to manage the reps to, if that yeah. makes sense. So they're like, oh, I know I need to make a million a year per rep or something but they don't really know how to break that down and say, okay, that means each of you, I need five net new meetings a week. That means we need at least two of those turning into proposals every month. Like yeah. they don't know how to break that down because they just don't know what good looks like. So I feel like that's the problem with at least a lot of my clients. And so we try to educate them, right? I'm like, okay, what's the ACV? What's this? What's that? Let's break it down into like the top of top of funnel metrics that we need to see to get to the bottom of funnel. Um, and then even with sales calls, and so, again, for say, early stage companies, the founder doesn't always know how, like, if, even if they listen to a sales call, they wouldn't yeah. necessarily know how to coach the rep. Um, and I think we all have different styles too, right? Yeah. And not one style works um, either. So I think the more, I guess, with bigger sales orgs, um, you have to have top-down accountability. You want to- What does that look like though? So for me, that means if- I mean, I'm sure sales leaders at all sales size companies are still involved in deals. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, at least that's always been my um, experience. And even like with startups, the CEO is oftentimes still involved in the deal, had, you know, de facto head of sales. Um, so I think to me that that means like showing up prepared to the calls, right? Like yeah. doing your research before the call, showing up prepared to the call, um, following up with your reps and making sure that you get follow up out to the customer or prospective customer, you know, in a timely fashion, um, staying involved, staying engaged, staying available Yeah. with your reps, like being present and leading from the front, um, I think is really important. And then also following up with like, for me, I love reports for accountability. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, I build like the naughty list reports with yeah. you know f within all of our clients crms and i say to the ceo like i can build the report but it's up to you to say like your voice is the one that matters the most it's up to you to come down on the reps and say i should not see your name on this report on monday yeah if i seen your name on this report on monday and it's not cleared by tuesday that's a problem like clear clear direction of like yeah. expectations and see I, I i love that factor too um so go back to this. Why do you feel that works so well? Because it's transparent, right? And it's objective. I think yeah. like to me, like the easiest way to get accountability other than uh, practicing what you preach and displaying the activity or that displaying the behavior that you want to see yeah. your reps. Other than that, to me, it's object objective transparency. So like, again, coming down to things that we can measure. How many meetings did you have last week? Yeah. Have you not updated your pipeline? Have you not submitted your forecast? Whatever that is, like those are objective things. Has it been done? Yes or no? Black and white numbers. It is what it is. Like how? Uh, yeah. I don't know. No, and, and that makes total sense because one of the things that it goes back to um, is the clear expectation. I feel I've been a part of yeah. an organization, even if it was a small organ or like sometimes a big, you know, bigger org that just they behave like they were small. The thing that I saw was when they didn't have clear expectations of the sales reps, but it was like in a figment of their imagination. This is what I hope that you would be hitting, but not clearly defining that. We find that the sales reps weren't doing it. And yeah. that led to, you know, inacti inactivity, led to frustration and so forth. And then go back to displaying the behavior that you want, like exemplifying that behavior. I think that's another critical component, whether when you're a sales leader, to be able to help your team. So, for instance, for me, even with our team, we have a yeah. small team. We have a, a four of us is in a BDR space, a four BDRs and myself. And what we do, we do a lot of uh, like I, I jump. We have a weekly standing, I mean, a daily standing meeting, 15 minutes led by our team lead. I jump in. But then also we, I put my numbers up, too, because we have yep. our numbers, our goals for the day. So then it's like if Donald is doing this, then I clearly have to do mine as well. Agreed. And I put like, you know, traveling makes it a little bit more difficult, but I try to put about a buck an hour to two hours of 
prospecting, whether that's through LinkedIn or my direct outreach yep. to folks. So with that now, I can ask for your results because I am doing it as well to some capacity. And my other, all my other jobs. <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like. Yeah, you should be able to do that one. Yeah, and because it's like, um, I don't know, I, I think that's important. And I feel like with a clear expectation, you're displaying, like you're saying, the behavior that you want. But then also, and I know all leaders can't do that. They're not going to be able to do that. But the the same, but the, the same token is being there for me and helping. And know that I can approach you about that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or having that, the idea of having that monthly one-on-one, -on -one, depending on what the size of the organization is. But if I have that and I know I'm going to sit down with you, like, dang, I'm going to make sure when I'm going for Jessica, I am prepared as much as possible. But I find that one-on-one -on -one gets pushed aside because of so many other far yeah, uh, priorities. That does happen. I agree with that. You see that. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, I do see it happen. Uh, I try very hard not to have that happen with at least my team yeah. um, and try to coach clients the same way. Cause I agree with you. If you don't create the space for the conversation and you don't stick to it consistently, then how, again, to your point, you're not that's even a bad display of what you're looking for. Yeah. You want them to have consistency, yet you can't have consistency in meeting with them. Yeah. It's like any, hypocritical. <laughs> do you have any clients that implement accountability well, maybe after they went through your content, your your training, your program, your consulting, and then they're doing good job right now with keeping reps accountable? Um trying to think if we have I don't feel like I have anyone that's like super great at that right now um but in the past yeah it's been about uh, again for me like to your point setting clear expectations yeah which sometimes is just us educating the founder or the sales leader about what good looks like but yeah defining that objectively with metrics um and then implementing transparent reporting yep and clear top-down directive as well of like not just you know jessica saying it or donald saying it but like the ceo coming down and saying yes yeah. this is what i need to see if we don't see it within 90 days you're going to be on a performance play or whatever like i don't know it has to be like Get definitive <laughs> in my opinion like that um and and that's and then i again i guess just the managers staying on top of that one thing one of my sales managers said to me and I, like never leaves my head and I repeat it to clients all the time is he was like, when you're performing and you're hitting your metrics, I work for you. I am uh, here to get things out of your way. I'm here to help you accelerate your deals. I, whatever you need, I'm here because you're doing your job. When you're not hitting your numbers, you work for me. <laughs> and like he used to make us, if you weren't, which thankfully I wasn't, I always was on the good side of this, but like for our entire sales team, if you were not hitting your numbers of whatever, you know, for us, it was four meetings a week or whatever. Um, then you had to show up to your one-to-one -one with him with a spreadsheet filled out about why you didn't hit your numbers, what you have next week, how you're going to make up for it. Like you had to come like, and, and if you didn't show up for that, he's like, then we're not meeting. Go, yeah. go, go get your shit together and then come back and we'll have a meeting. But like, I'm not meeting with you until you have your shit together. But if you were hitting your numbers, you didn't need to show up to that meeting with anything yeah really you know what i mean like you yeah. are like a casual conversation so it's like he put more structure in place for the people that weren't meeting the goals and then when you were meeting the goals it was looser yeah i don't know clearly you're doing something you're following the play you're following the pa the plan that we have in place so you're doing what you're supposed to so less micromanagement um and i think the and i, I don't want to necessarily even go to say it's micromanagement it's just less um Structure. Yeah, structure. Like you, you're you doing clearly it. Clearly, don't need the structure. You got it. Yeah, you're you're some you have a self imposing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you're you're following that. And I and I like the concept there too, where a work for you versus you work for me. Yeah. And the work for like you know the managers working for me concept. I I've seen that where my leaders bent backwards for me. I'm you know I have the deals and I'm trying to help them progress or I really need some help with you know how do I get past this level or you know, giving me some uh, some guidance or whatnot, and or you know, getting the the tech team to the developers to maybe make a little change for me or whatnot. Yeah. They're going to bank because they know I wasn't just I wasn't being an order taker. I was creating value somewhere, and and helping. Um, what are some things that I can do as a rep to keep myself accountable? 
Uh, that's a good question. I, f- I feel like it's really just whatever works for, I think we're all different. Like some, yeah. some people color, you know, and time block their calendar. Like yeah. I don't really do that personally. Like for me, I put everything, for me personally, I put everything in a sauna. If it's client related, <laughs> if it's like new business related. Yeah. And I have, and I've built myself a system that works for me. And it's like, I, cu- I, every morning I am, I'm a morning person. Every morning I get up and I run through my tasks and I'm like, okay, what do I need to do today? All right. Today's shit's done. What do I have on this books for tomorrow? Yeah. What do I need to do today to get prepared for tomorrow? Like, and I just, I'm just religious about that, but I don't know as though there's a perfect way to do it. It's just finding a way that works for you and yeah. not letting yourself off the hook yes like somehow you're just like no i said i would like even now like i'm ceo i don't have to set a certain number of meetings but i have a quota i've given myself i'm like every yeah. week i want to have two net new meetings with prospective customers period end of conversation i'm the only one who could hold me accountable yeah but i do it like i don't know yeah and i think i i like what you said you know you're the ceo and i think when i when i was a full-time quota carry and rep at one point, I had this like brilliant idea, and realize now it's not that unique. But I had this brilliant idea that like, hold on, my territory, this is like my franchise. If it's my franchise, this is like my business. So then I started to behave a little bit different when I thought about it like that. Like I want this result as opposed to I need to do this result, you know, from for my boss or or whatnot. And it made a difference. Um, and you just reminded me of something else that. I remember when I was a new rep, I did, which was, and maybe this is good advice for reps, go talk to other reps. And if they're not other sales reps at your company, go talk to sales reps at other companies. Like sales yeah. reps are pretty open and and willing to chat, especially if you join like a modern sales pros or any of those kind of communities, right? Um, but go talk to other reps and say, what do you do well? Yeah. What's your process? And like, I did a lot of shadowing and seeing what other reps did when I was new. And I took a little something from many different people to come up with what works for me. But like, go shop. Yeah. Yeah. And I I, I like that too, because every industry or every company may have a little different yeah. swag. And, I, and when it comes to the point, like, you have to be, you know, go back to the accountability. You have to have some level of self accountability or, that willingness to be able to progress or to improve, whether it's listening to a pod or going into a private community or researching, like you should, you should have that desire to make that happen. For me, like I always had a purpose, like the purpose wasn't just money. I wanted to really thrive. I really wanted to, you know, find success in my role. I wanted to, um, I wanted to use the result from the money to help my family or extended family or whatnot. Um, and I think unless you have that, it's really difficult to like, accountability. And more when you having this conversation, yes. yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Like they, they gotta be. There's accountability tied back to a deeper purpose. Yes. Yeah, it's gotta be. And like, I, well, for me, I that's interesting to hear. Like for me, it was I felt like before I was in sales, I was working really hard for an a like a pretty subjective bonus at the end of the year from somebody else yeah. that was kind of based on company performance and not really on me. And I was like, I want my outcomes to be a direct reflection of my inputs. Yes. Like for me, like for me. And that's why I was like, okay, that's why I want to be in sales. I want to be in sales because then whatever I put in is what I get out. Yeah. And I think that's how a lot of salespeople think. Right. Um, Cause then we're like, if we want to crush it, we can make three times you know, your OTE is assuming yeah. it's uncapped or whatever. Um, so I don't know. I think if you don't have that hustle or that like same, I want my output to reflect my input kind of mentality, then you're maybe not in the right role. <laughs> yeah. No, maybe look for a new sales gig. Yeah. <laughs> Go find a new job and become a... Um, customer success. A customer success. Nothing wrong with customer success, folks out there. <laughs> no, it's so, just a different mentality. Different, yeah. Different motivation. Um. I want to go back into this. I'm a brand new sales leader. I am listening to this episode. I know, I I, I feel like this stuff here makes sense. I want you to give me three recommendations, three things that I can do that I need to do right now to implement accountability in my organization with my reps. 
If you haven't given them clear uh, objectives and expectations in the form of week to week expectations, okay, then how do I fi- how do I you, figure out what that is? Um, for me, how I figure that out is just backwards math, right? So, like, okay. if I know I need to each rep to pull in X dollars of ACV per year, break that down to a monthly ACV. Look at my uh, average time to close a deal. Okay, what are my average conversion ratios? And you back into like, all right, I'm going to need to have five meetings with qualified customers per week to get to one proposal to get to one deal or whatever your numbers are. You're going to have to back into that to figure out, Um, but get it back into back into a per week meeting number (laughs) is my one of my goal or one of my recommendations. And then also set expectations as well around the other like administrative tasks you need, you know, like within 24 hours of a uh, first meeting, we want you to send a follow up email like that is period of no conversation no, no, no 24 hours. Approaching. Yeah, that needs to happen by the end of every Friday. Your pipeline needs to be updated. Your forecast needs to be submitted, et cetera, et cetera. Like whatever that is, like is in terms of number of meetings and SLAs on when you need things done, like yeah. clearly communicate and articulate that to your team and then set up reporting that allows you to benchmark that easily. Like, was there a meeting on Tuesday and no email went out until Thursday? Like, that's very easy in today's day and age to like yeah. get a report on from a CRM, like have that as a management dashboard. And on Monday, then you uh, call people out. Yeah, you know, you know exactly where to go. So I I'm, I I got my clear expectation. I backwards into my numbers. I did that part. Check. What what's my second thing that you would have me do? Brand new sales leader here, so I'm learning. Um, I mean, review it with the team. Like, make it available for the whole team. And then, if it's not working, like, ask your team. You know, like, ask like open dialogue too, right? Like, guys, this is the third week in a row that you haven't done it. Why? Yeah. I make them answer instead of you just deciding you know why right like make them answer yeah and keep asking why why until they're embarrassed or (laughs) good answer you know like yeah um and sometimes it is like they with my team another i guess good example i kept they kept missing some deadlines just related to client work and i dug in and i was like what why is this keep happening guys like the third week in a row and we ended up uh we had a really good discussion and i was like safe space I just, this can't happen. This can't keep happening. So like, can we dig into why, what's really going on here? And it ended up, we figured out that the way they had their Asana, like their personal Asana, like configured, the view was like not conducive to them getting their work done. And so I was like, okay, let me share how I set up my view on Asana. And this is how I organize my tasks. And this is how I make sure everything's done. And, and I like recorded a loom. I was like, watch it as many times as you need to. But like, this is, I think, an effective way to manage your tasks. And yeah. we've seen a significant improvement. So like, that was just a dialogue where I was like, all right, it's simple as fixing your Asana view. All right. You know? Yeah. We can do that. Perfect. Very easy. Um, very doable. Um, the f- and, and a final component. So now I'm doing all of that. I got I got my metrics set up. I started giving the clear team, the team expectation. I met with the team. We, um, you know, guiding them on Solved. that. Some simple things. Yeah. Maybe final thing that I yeah. I need to do now myself as a leader other than like just displaying I think those same behaviors too right like if you're telling the team everything needs to be done by Friday you better make sure your shit's done suit you know like yeah whatever you're telling them to do do on, like, practice there. what you preach you know yeah. um and and I think like if you if you've set the clear expectations you have the reporting you have the conversations you've resolved everything you can resolve for them and they're still not meeting their expectations like then you need to also be like a strong leader and cut the cord. Yeah. Because that's going to send a message to other people too, that you as a leader and that you as a firm, like that's for real. Like you're serious. Yeah. Like this is what you expect of people. You, you're you open to feedback and you're going to give people time to make improvements. But at the end of the day, like we're running a business here. Yeah. And I do see too many leaders keep poor performing reps around too Why? long. And I I don't know other than maybe HR concerns yeah (laughs) but like it blows my mind I'm like you know if you're not performing to me if I don't see someone really getting in their groove in 90 days it doesn't get better from there no so cut your losses and move on I find um you know you hire slow 
and relief from payroll fast. Yes. Uh -huh. Um, and then uh, with the with sales, I've always said before my business that we're a family. And then I went to an event. Uh, I can't remember the event, but someone uh, they said it is like we're not a family, and my business we're a team. And then I was like, "Ooh, go deeper on that." They said you can't fire your family members, but you can fire team members. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to fire a family member, and sometimes when we go to because yeah, it's it's definitely we're not a our business. We may have family like behaviors, but we're not a family. I do have one family member to work with me, like blood family, but we're a team. And the way the team works, the way that we said, is this clear expectation. We strive for excellence in all that we do. Yep. So if you can't make that, if you can't be a varsity player, or if you fell out of varsity player capability, you need to come and you need to, you're going to have accountabilities, our one-on-ones, but then you need to realize, and that's the agreement that we signed at the beginning, that if it comes to a point where you can't perform at a varsity level anymore, then you're probably going to be on a JV team and we're a varsity team and Mm -hmm. then it's no no hard feelings, but it's just not, I'll help you find somewhere else maybe you should yeah. go, but it may not be the best fit anymore. But I think that clear expectation makes a difference. So t It's like a bringing me back to sorority days, but we say, nice, nice somewhere else. <laughs> you know, like everyone, to your point, everyone has a, everyone has value, everyone yeah. can add value, but maybe this isn't the place for you and the longer you exactly. leave them in your organization, they're not performing that's sending the wrong message to your other reps, but it's also probably upsetting your other reps. Yeah. Like as a top performer at, at in prior sales orgs, that really bothered me. And I think also- so I like, that's inbound leads going to that person. And you're hurting that anything. person. And you know, whatever, I want that one coming to me. Why am I not getting, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's just like wasted. And you're, you're hurting that other person too. You may feel like you're helping them, but you're putting them in a position where they can't really succeed. Go ahead and give them the opportunity to find somewhere else. Um, but not like don't burn any bridges because yeah. I found like people, they gave me recommendation, encouraged me, you know, connect some, you know, help me connect with somebody else, another prospect or whatnot, even though they were one of Oh, agreed. Yeah, stuff. never burn a bridge. Yeah. And to your point, we have worked with some clients where we found that it is, that they are a good valued team member in another department. Yeah. We have, we really have moved yeah. people from sales to CS or something like that, where it's like, you're not, you're not the right fit here, but you do have a strong skill set. You're good at connecting with people. You're good at whatever, whatever. Yeah. Let's put you somewhere else. I love it. Jessica, you're working on a lot of cool things too. Some of the clients, maybe go back to the top. Your your clients, early stage companies, founders, they've been doing the selling. They're trying to get the next step right now. You guys do boot camps, right? Yes. Well, my for the first time. Yeah. I'm launching about my that. first ever founder led sales boot camp. Find all the information <laughs> in the show notes. Um yeah, I'm really excited about it. And basically it was just it's uh, I try to price our services affordably, but I understand that it's yeah. still too expensive for some really early stage, especially pre-seed founders to work with us one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And so I wanted to be able to help more people, uh, but do it in a scalable way. And so that's the, you know, insert the boot camp. So it's going to be a five day, um, all things go to market. So we're basically going to be helping founders learn everything about go to market fundamentals, um, inbound and like how to drive inbound leads yeah. or NPR. Uh, how to do outbound, how to think about partnerships, rev ops, and then building their team. Come so on. it's going to be like all inclusive. And then we're hoping to do it once a quarter after, like hereafter, if it's a success, you know? When it's a success. Yeah, when, when it's a success. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Well, that's pretty yeah. cool. So um, if we want to connect with you further, where do we find that? Where should we go? Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm sure you'll put my uh, my website. Um but yeah, that's about it. I mean, is there a landing page for the boot camp yet, or it's just yeah, on website? you can find it on my website. It's okay. like in the banner at the top. So there you go. You can find all the details <laughs> there. So listen, I hope you're finding benefit from the episode today. Again, all of our content is designed around three, two things: one, helping you to build pipe, um, and two, helping you to convert that pipeline. If you found benefit from this episode today, go ahead and hit me up on LinkedIn, Donald C. Kelly. As always, I want you to raise your level of thinking, go out and do big things. Thanks so much, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you.